people of the purple butterfly here otherwise known as people seven on twitter and youtube people are elsewhere on the internet you have soaps look at purple butterfly dash soaps dot my shopify dot com and my blog purple butterfly dash people dot blackspot dot com and this is the last of this particular bundle and I'm real surprised because I did all of this with one bundle of hair. And I do have another bundle um, in the other room. So that way, if this doesn't complete the whole thing, I will still be able to finish the wig. But as you can see, I've done the crown. I'm headed towards the temple area and the uh, frontal region. But it occurred to me, um, especially when somebody asked me, how come I have this triangle split here? I ventilate my hair in the way my hair grows. If someone I was ventilating here for had a whirl or a different growth pattern, I would try to emulate that so that way the hair falls the way they're used to. But I know my growth pattern because at one point in time, I shaved my head off. <laughs> Long story behind that and then a couple of fun stories behind that. But the first time I had cancer, my hair was shedding everywhere. It was clogging up the sink falling in the shower, on my pillow, being really itchy. And instead of waiting for the prosthetic uh, wig appointment, I said, heck with it. I just went ahead and shaved it all off and then put on some bright red lipstick and some big earrings. <laughs> and everybody at work was like, my God, your hair! My God, your hair! When they realized it was me. Because from the back, apparently, I look like a guy. <laughs> As one person put it, Carl Lewis. And then when I turned around, my God, your hair. But anyway, I noticed when my hair was growing back, because, you know, when your hair is in a teeny weeny afro and you try to style it or comb it back or, as they tell you, brush it and um, get your wave pattern. Well, my hair has a whirl right here literally at the vertex or the crown my temples go in on my nape it goes out and then in the back it goes straight down and in the front literally it comes um, towards my face and even now with my hair being longer if I take a shower and just shake my hair it's going to fall in those directions and the crown area where the world is literally sticks straight up and goes in several different directions. Well, when I ventilate, I follow the same pattern on the sides. This is being ventilated at an angle. This is ventilated at that angle and then I braid it down so that way it's out of my way and this is going this way. Now in the front, and as you can tell, I took some crayons and marked it. That's going at this angle. This is going at this angle. And then this is going to go straight to the front. Now the temple's already done. You know, that goes down and it's almost like a reverse diagonal on this side. But as you can tell, I've already done that part. In fact... I did that, that part of my head is called the halo. I did that first. So, yeah. But that's how come I have this triangle here, or pyramid, or whatever. That's how come I ventilate my hair in that particular pattern, because that way when I comb out the wig it'll fall exactly the way my hair falls because that's what I'm used to um good example when 
because my hair grows this way. When I try to brush my hair back, especially when it's straight, it's going to stick straight up and give me instant volume because if my hair is growing this way and I brush it back this way, instead of lying flat like this, it's going to stick up like that because it's going against the grain of the way my hair grows. Um, when you ventilate a wig, if you want the hair to have volume, the way your natural hair has volume when you brush it back, you're going to have to ventilate it to the front because that gives it a grain for it to brush against. Um, if you want your hair to lie flat, and that seems to be the theme every now and then, you see people, they get wigs, they'll get a curly wig or they'll get a straight wig, and the first thing they do with the straight wig is they hit it with a high iron trying to get it as flat as possible. My hair's not flat. <laughs> Even with two braids, it's not flat. It's never going to be flat. I accept that because that's the way God made me. And I happen to enjoy the fact that my hair has volume. Now, when I want to wear a wig and have my actual hair flat as possible, instead of two braids, I'll put at least four braids or six braids. One time I did 12 braids. My hair literally was flat as a pancake. That was the hairstyle I had it in to do my measurements and my... Um, when they did the prosthetic wig mapping and literally they take a piece of plastic wrap, put it over your head, put tape on it and then they literally draw your hairline through the tape and I saved mine and that's how come I know I have a 24 inch dome uh, uneven hairline and when I started making my own wigs that's the pattern I went by and then when my hair started growing back, I made notations that, hey, my hair grows this way. Um, I'm OCD, so I noticed stuff like that. I had no idea at that time that it would help me, you know, make my own wigs when I'm ventilating because of the simple fact that that was in the past and the future hadn't happened yet. But... That information, because you live and grow, has helped me in the way I make wigs. Um, I could buy a wig and there's been issues. Like the fact that most wigs that you buy from the hair store or even if you buy a wig from, you know, companies like Love Me Hair, that say, oh, yeah, we have large, so for so they don't fit me right. Well, there's a reason they don't fit me right. Those are generic and not necessarily made for my individual head, and that's why I make my own. This is a 24-inch wig block. Um, if you look back at the pink full lace wig, that was made with a 22-inch wig block, which is actually the average head size. I forgot I was working on the 22 at the time I made the pink, and then, of course, I had to cut it up the back and add more lace and add more hair so it would fit my big dome of a head. <laughs> Actually, let me show you that for those that didn't see that particular video. This really needs brushing out. But it's also going to need restyling because I'm over the whole straight and wavy thing. It's going to go back to curly. But... Let me show you the construction of this wig. You see that? That V is, where is this shadow coming from? <laughs> this house is so bright, it's odd to see a shadow. But, is it my camera? Hmm, okay, there we go. That V is literally where I cut it up the middle, added a piece of lace, and then added more hair in. And that hair was a different um, texture, so then I had to redip it, restyle it, thin it, and all that to get it back to, you know. But as you could tell, I am used to modifying. In fact, if I take the um, wig off of here, 
you will see there's permanent markings on here. You will see where I actually drew the place where I start to cut to um, alter because most wig caps do not come in large and if you happen to have a large head and every wig cap you come across is a medium the first thing you do is you stick it on well you have to kind of stretch it on your 24 inch block and then take some scissors and very carefully cut it up where you already have a guide drawn and then add a piece of lace so that way you can fit it to your head now in my daughter's case it would be the opposite i would literally split it right there and then take it in two inches because she has a small head and she's cute but she was always a teen child and now she's a teeny adult and um you don't really find wigs in 20 inches. I think the smallest you could buy commercially would be a 21 inch wig. They still have adjusters so she can adjust it. But every now and then, you know, she's doing what she do and she has to literally, you know, cause it'll slide off and shift and all that because her head is smaller than the wig. The only thing worse than having a wig that's just too tight because it doesn't fit is having one that's too big and falls right off your head, you know. And, you know, she's young, so I could imagine, you know, how that could be problematic. You know, you're in the club and you're going, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> I don't have that problem. Now, when... I have a wig that's too tight or uh, too small, it does the right up thing. So it won't fall off, but it will right up just past my hairline where everybody can see, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> that's when I decided, cause um, one time I put on, um, it was a dark colored wig and my hair was already pink. And when it rolled up, it told the world, hey, that's a wig, because it was a big pink hairline right there. So, yeah. That's when I decided, okay, we're going to modify this wig to fit my actual hair. And I modify every wig to fit my actual head if I don't have um, a 24-inch block that I made the wig cap from. Because I... Actually, I should link that video. There is a video of me making a wig cap from start to finish. And basically, I just took the lace and put it this way, took some, put it this way, took some and put it through the middle, and then sewed it down to my exact hair side. Tried it on, did adjustments, and then, you know, made sure it fit me. And the only issue I had was my ears because the way I made it, it was hanging over the ears and I didn't want to have to cut it and ruin the lace so I had to make adjustments for the ears and now I can do that in my sleep and the ears not, isn't an issue because of the way I do it. Now I do that directly on my own head and then put that on the wig um, block so that works out well. But in the meantime, just for the answer to the question of why I did it that way, it's my growth pattern. You know, at one point in time, I'm probably going to put an arrow here, arrow here, arrow here. But since I basically remember what my growth pattern is, I don't generally do that because it's already up here but if I was making a wig for somebody else the first thing I'm going to do is brush their hair back brush their hair to the side so I can see where it sticks up where the volume comes where it naturally falls where the world is and then ventilate accordingly so yeah in the meantime I'm finishing the crown I'm headed to the tempo then we'll be at the front, and then I'll be finished with this. Well, 
finished with the wig portion. It still has to be bleached and it still has to be dyed to match my raspberry twist hair color of it all. And that's another reason why it's going to be dyed my exact color. Say, for instance, if there was an issue with the write-up or I didn't feel like, um, you know, anchor it down with gel and I just wanted to part it and blend it, it would blend because it's the exact same color. So, yeah. But like I said, I even put my widow's peak in this thing. <laughs> it's technically a work of art. Yeah, but in the meantime... Thought I'd share that. This has been People of Seven on Twitter and YouTube, People of Elsewhere on the Internet. My soaps are located at purplebutterfly-soaps.myshopify.com. My blog, purplebutterfly-peopler.blogspot.com. Oh, and one more thing. I now weigh 217 pounds for the third week in a row consistent. Yeah. I broke that 220 plat plateau, y'all. I don't know how. <laughs> I wasn't trying to. But that's what I weigh. And my doctor confirmed it. And he said, it's not your meds. It's not your diabetes. It's something that you're doing consciously or subconsciously that allowed you to lose the weight. Now, my goal was 220. And when I got to 220... I stayed at 220, and I haven't done anything different that I know of. I don't exercise more. In fact, I exercise less because, you know, knees and pain, and I don't move much if I don't got to. You know, I get on my rollator and go to the front of this building and get in my car. That's literally the, I mean, and then walking back to my apartment from the lobby that sometimes is a long walk for me. That could be considered exercise, but it's not extra exercise. I'm not eating it. In fact, I've had a couple of days where, you know, bad girl, you're diabetic, but I've indulged in cookies. <laughs> but yeah, thought I'd share that. If I figure out how I lost the weight, I'll make a video of it, and that way maybe it'll help somebody else. But for right now, I'm under 220. Um, if I try to lose weight, I'll try to go down to 215. Or hopefully, from whatever it is I'm doing, I'll go down to 215. But I don't want to go down... Um, under that because all my clothes fit the size that I am and I can't afford to buy new clothes but yeah um if I go to 215 because most of the clothes were bought at 215 they'll still fit you know with the belt without a belt but I can't go any smarter than that because well I do have a sewing machine so I could alter it but then what if I gain the weight back so yeah that's a whole other thing. So, I'm going to end the video here. I'm going to finish working on that um, to see how far I get. It hasn't been a month like it usually takes me, but by the same token, it hasn't been that 10 days either. <laughs> yeah. I have done a personal best, but two days and even the 10 days was not a reasonable goal for me to set but it is what it is this has been people of seven y'all stay blessed stay tuned bye now